Today, we'll be showing how you can make integration easy with four complementary technologies. The first one is Knative, Knative Venting to be specific. So that's what this diagram here is showing is the flow of some information from a source to a sink through a channel. And some of these components are Knative components, as well as Camel K components. And this is all running on Kubernetes and OpenShift. The use case is sending some values via an HTTP request that fans out from a channel that we are subscribed to and ultimately send data to a Postgres database and a logger. In order to have all of these pieces in place to make everything work, we, we would use the operator hub on OpenShift. We would install serverless. So if we came in and just looked for serverless, we could click that, click install. It's like installing a mobile application. It's pretty quick. You would also install Camel K. So we've got that Red Hat integration, Camel K, as well as CrunchyDB for the database. So we need a database to send this information to. And I like to use this operator as well to spin that up it gives me automatic backups and recovery so i've recovered some data so we'll have some tables to work with i have all of those things already installed so if we come over and look at our developer view we can see that the crunchy db database is running that's the only thing that's running in our intro dash integration dash demo namespace what I will want to do now is switch back to my administrator view, go to serverless, go to eventing, and I need a channel. If we were to jump back to our diagram here, that corresponds to this component here that allows us to fan out the request as we post our values to multiple locations. So we're not using anything like Kafka or, or anything like that. We're using a Knative channel and to do that, we're going to hit Create Channel. We're going to keep this default channel in memory. We're going to just call it My Channel. Hit Create. And that will come up here. So we have now added a channel to our topology map. So far so good, but how do we make this HTTP to Postgres happen without having to do a lot of work? So that's where these sources and sinks and these various plugins that we have automatically installed when you install those operators, you have those at your disposal. One of those sinks is a Postgres sink that is essentially a black box that allows you to then work with it in this way. I have some properties that I'm going to put into an encrypted secret. I will show you the steps that are required. So we're basically going to just do four commands. We're going to create a secret with our properties that these other components can use. And we're just going to apply some YAML, some pretty simple YAML and they're going to take advantage of those other plugins that will do a lot of the heavy lifting for us for making th connections to things like Postgres. So if we look at the properties that we're going to put in our secret, we have our server name and our username, but we also have this query. And that query has some values that can be replaced and that that's going to be replaced with our JSON that comes in as an HTTP request. And I'll show you how all of that works. So the first thing that we want to do is do an OC create on those properties. And if it's already there, it will just say, hey, it already exists. And then the next step is to apply this so we have the first step, which is sending an HTTP request. So it looks like 
it's just some simple YAML that says I'm taking an HTTP request, which is a post, and I'm going to send that to a sync, which is that channel. And, and so OpenShift and Kubernetes know how to send that data to that channel given this name. It automatically wires that up. And what's really nice is that all of this is serverless. So some of these things will come will spin up as running pods. A pod is the smallest unit that can run as a container, but then when it's not being used, automatically all of these components that, that I'm going to be spinning up via YAML will automatically spin down when they're not being used and then spin back up again when it re receives a request. So let's do the steps. The first one is OC apply that HTTP to channel And if we come back and look at OpenShift, now our topology map, we will see that spin up really quickly. We can click on the logs and we can see that it is connected and it will be listening at an endpoint that we can use to communicate via REST, HTTP, send a JSON object to and it will put it into the channel. And then to do the rest of what we need, we're going to come in here and say OC apply this other binding. And that is going to look like this. It takes it from the channel and then sends it to our Postgres sync. We don't need to know much more than that. We don't need to know, you know the underlying implementation of this. OpenShift is going to take care of that for us. The only thing that we have to do is give it those properties that we told it are in a secret called dbconfig. So if you put this annotation in there, it will know how to take that and, and wire everything up. All right, we're going to apply that. And then we're also going to apply our last binding, which is then the log. So channel, so we're gonna go from the channel to just a log. Now, as we mentioned, those components, if they're not being used, will spin down. So you don't see them right now running. But if we were to send a request, and let's first bring over our PG admin. And this is the special abilities table that we're actually going to be inserting data into using this integration component. I'm going to hit query. So we have 10 records. And if I come into my postman and automatically a route was created that lets me communicate to that endpoint and I'm going to hit send, I'm going to send this JSON object. And in the background, you'll see this com container start, start up for me, as well as another container that sends it to the, to a log and if we came back to PG admin, we will see that we have an 11th record. And in our, so we had a 202 accepted. We had our pods spin up and do the work. Enter information, enter that record into the Postgres database, as well as log the data. Let's hope. Hope we can get there before it spins down. So if we look at logs, we also see that it sent that same body to a log. And if we go back and watch now, it will take just a little bit of time. And those pods, when they no longer receive requests, will spin back down. You can see them spinning back down now because they haven't received any requests for a little while and that will save on resources, memory and CPU that you don't need if they're not being used. All right, thank you. Hopefully you can see how it can be quite efficient to use these technologies for taking data from a source and sending it to its destination, utilizing a number of built-in plugins and capabilities that prevent you from having to get too far into the details of implementation. All right, thank you, bye.